Okay, so I'm making this video because I want to strengthen the worship of, of believers, strengthen our testimony, and strengthen our level of intimacy and worship towards God, our friend, our leader, our Lord, our God. So, when a, a man is standing on a battlefield and there's soldiers lined up with him and we're not talking about this new battle where they're going with guns and bullets and stuff i'm talking about olden day battle where you got your armor on you got your sword you know and your helmet and you got your face paint on and the enemy is like you know 200 yards away and they got their swords and their face paint and they're all ready to go and getting ready for war um, you look over at them and they got snarling faces, you know, and they're all pumped up, sweating already. We haven't even started fighting yet and they're all sweating and they're ready. They're juiced, they're screaming, they're grunting. And then the battle um, horn goes, dun, dun, and then our team marches out onto the field and you go out there and you're like, ah! You don't expect that your team, your fellow soldiers are all gonna stop what they're doing and look at you like, uh, this dude is tripping. He's over here yelling. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that. You would expect that if you got step onto the battlefield and you're like, Aah! your soldiers are gonna be with you, all of them, Aah! Aah! just running out there towards the opposing team. And so what I'm saying is there's a time and place for everything, okay? On the battlefield, going out to battle is a time to be putting on your, your face and your sweat and your intensity and your ah, battle cry. And you don't expect people to look at you like you're crazy. But if you know, you're at the grocery store and you're, you're picking out uh, vegetables and you're like, ah, okay, now that's not appropriate. The, the timing is not right. So... When we're at church, we claim, as Christians, who we claim? We claim that we're going there to a place where we expect God to actually be. Scripture says what? When three or more are gathered in his name, he's there in the presence. And we're all worshiping. Does the scripture also say that God, God inhabits the um, presence of his worship or his praise or something to that effect? So we as a body generally believe that when we go to church, we're supposed to be meeting with God all together, fellowshipping to worship the one true God. And we expect that that true God actually hears our worship and is pleased by it. So in that setting, a place where their worship is going up there's instruments sitting in the church for the purpose of being played and making noise and joyful noise and there's actually people in place who are leading this joyful noise that is intended for us to make to god i would say that that is an appropriate place to scream a joyful noise to jesus I would say that is an appropriate place to elevate your voice, to project with energy and enthusiasm the praise of the God who you're generally praising. You know, if Obama, if Obama or not everybody doesn't like Obama, we'll just say if a wonderful president, ex-president or future president were to come to our congregation and walk in those front doors, you know, and the, your pastor was like, everybody stand. Um, the president is coming in. All the members are going to stand. Generally, most of the members will stand up and they say, give a round of applause for the president. Everybody's going to be clapping, right? And the president turns and looks at you directly in your face. So you're going to be like this. Or you're going to be like, all right. You know, you're going to be enthused. You're going to put on a face of appreciation or something. You know, you're going to be like, yeah, the president's here. This is just a man just like us, might not even be as tall as me. He could be shorter than me, I don't know. He might not be, he's not like some huge man of great stature, just a man who um, has the office of being the president, but when he walks through those doors, everyone smiles and claps. How much more should we be enthralled with enthusiasm and pleasure than in the presence of God? During a worship service, when they start singing that song and they have the words playing up there in the front, you're supposed to look at those words, connect with them from the heart, and sing a joyful sound to the creator of the universe who is worthy of all praise. Because the level of your praise 
shows the level, level of your enthusiasm for that person to which you're praising. So when you're praising the president as he walks in there, you're smiling and you're giving a little clap, that shows your level of enthusiasm. But now a real fan of the president, when the president comes through the door, you're like, oh my gosh, Mr. President, Mr. President, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. You know, their level of enthusiasm goes up. So it testifies to the level of love that the person has to the person who's being praised. So when I see one person clapping like this, Mr. President, and I see another person going, oh my gosh, Mr. President, who do I think loves the president more? Who do I want to interview after? If I want to build up people to come and follow the president, I'm going to want to grab the guy who's got the great um, praise going so that I can see what do you have to say? What is making you so happy about this president guy? Same thing with God our Father. When it comes time to worship and people are walking into the room and they see all these fellow believers standing around the room and it's time to start worshiping our God, they look around to see his portion. Let's see how, 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 how good is your God? How mighty is your God? And they look over at you and they want to get an idea of how mighty your God is and they see you doing this. Mighty God, 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 and then they, it, it's like not a high level of enthusiasm. If you were really appreciating God and really serving a true God that you truly believed in and you know people are looking at you and they're measuring the greatness of your God by the greatness of your worship to him because they don't see him or experience him, but they can only see him and feel him through our testimony and our worship is a form of testimony. So as Christians, you need to let your voice ring out to the Lord and praise him with your voice, not just with your heart, because that's like loving your wife with your heart. Oh, she knows I love her, but sometimes she wants to hear that you love her and other people will know that you love her through the way you engage with her, but by the way you lavish your love on her with your words. That leaves an undeniable testimony. He who confesses me with his heart and with his mouth. So confess that you love the Lord with your voice as you sing out in the safe presence of other believers. If those believers are looking at you crazy, I go back to the battlefield um, parable. If people looked at you crazy on the battlefield when you were going, ah, you would, should not, first of all, you should not stop. But you should a second guess, like, wait a minute. Who did I come out to battle with? Because these dudes ain't ready. They're not ready. I'm out here getting my battle cry, and these dudes actually took out a second to laugh at my battle cry. Are you kidding me? You know what? I'm putting my sword down. Now, I'm taking my sword and my clubs, and I'm going to go get with a real... Okay, look, I don't want to um, make people want to leave their church. What I want you to do is lead the battle cry and encourage your fellow confused warriors about where they are because they're they're not re seem to realize the gravity of the situation here you're on a battlefield this is not time you don't know you obviously don't know where you are and who that is that's opposing us you know get juiced because we're on the battlefield so that scenario scenario doesn't necessarily transfer over to worship but it is an appropriate situation and for somebody to not be praising out with their heart shows that they don't know who they're in the presence of and they don't know who they're worshiping. But you, don't be distracted by them, you and your family and your voice and your body and your hands. You praise the Lord and you show them where they are. You're in the presence of a holy and mighty God. And we, all of this, we worship him because he's worthy, he's loving. So when those loving some songs come on, you bask in the love of your father. And then when those worship comes on, you worship him for he's worthy. So you engage in worship and don't let other people detect, take away from your testimony and take away. And do you really believe? Because if you did, you should be praising. Unless you've been confused or something. I don't want you second guessing your salvation, but I do want you pressing and living and walking and worshiping and growing closer with God. I propose that through... Um, better worship you'll have a more intimate experience with God through your worship and also from kind of 
breaking down the strongholds of peer pressure and fighting through and worshiping and experiencing that victory and overcoming the eyes of other men and worrying about the approval of men rather than the approval of God. So I want to encourage you to break down the strongholds of the enemy who try to keep your voice from pressing through for breakthrough to the Father and pure, clean, heartfelt, genuine, lifting of the voice, praise to God who's worthy. Do that. Walk in it, live in it, try it, love it. Let people know that you love God. Let them know.